Hey AP Calculus, AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. Going to take a look at example two from topic 5.3. We're still dealing with finding intervals of increasing and decreasing of a given function. This time, we're going to have to do a little bit of derivative work to get us into the problem. Let's take a look at our example two. All right, as you can see, we are given a function, f of x is x cubed minus 3 halves x squared, and we're asked to find the intervals over which this function is either increasing or decreasing. So unlike the previous problem, we don't have a graph to go by, so we're going to have to figure out all of this information pretty much analytically, algebraically, uh, so to speak. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is to take a derivative, and that's not too terribly difficult with this guy. Uh, x cubed will differentiate to become 3x squared, and this 3 halves x squared looks kind of bad at the beginning, but once you take this derivative, the 2's will cancel, and you end up with 3x to the first. Step 2, you're going to find critical values. Critical values occur in two different circumstances, if you recall from topic 5.2's lessons, that uh, they occur when the derivative is either equal to 0, or when the derivative is undefined. So you're going to focus on both of these. Oftentimes, one of them might be uh, sort of obsolete. And I'll go right to that one uh, because it seems that's going to be the obvious one. And that's going to be the undefined part. The fact is, if your derivative does not contain a fraction, really listen to this because this is such good advice. If your derivative here doesn't contain a fraction, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to have any result for f prime being undefined. Because an undefined value is typically where a denominator is 0. If you're not a fraction, you don't have a denominator. Now the f prime being zero, that's a little bit more uh, interesting to us because we're going to go ahead and set this function equal to zero and we can solve it by factoring. So you're going to do a little algebra here. If you factor out a 3x, you're going to end up with both zero and one as your critical values. Now we're going to go to our number line. If you remember in video number one, we first introduced you to the number line, which is also uh, known as a sign chart. And we're going to toss our 0 and 1. It doesn't matter where you put them. You do want to put them in numerical order. It would be kind of silly to put 1 to the left of 0. And then I'd like to kind of fancy up my number line a little bit by, by understanding that the top is going to help me reveal what the sign of f prime is. And then the bottom is going to be my behavior of f, whether f is increasing or decreasing. Those are optional words. You don't have to write them, but it can help you decipher what you're doing with this line. All right, now what's going to happen is you're going to do something. It's actually called the, the first derivative test. You're going to test numbers in the first derivative, hence the name first derivative test. So I'm going to highlight that derivative because I don't want to lose sight of it. And it doesn't matter which one you use. I always like to use the factored version. That's 3x times x minus 1 because that's going to be the probably the easiest to work with. Now, what do I mean by this? derivative test, where you're going to pick a number anywhere on this interval that goes from negative infinity all the way to zero. There's a lot of numbers to choose from. Pick anything that you want. I'm going to choose negative one. And you're going to plug that negative one inside of these x's. So three times negative one is negative three. Negative one minus one is negative two. You don't have to fully simplify this expression. I know that that's equal to 6. You all know that that's equal to 6. All we care about is whether or not it's a positive or a negative. Because we learned that if our first derivative is positive, that means that our behavior is increasing. And that's what the test is going to look like. You're going to repeat that for as many intervals as we have. Our next interval, 0 to 1, is a little bit, no, not so friendly because we have to use a fractional value. Anything between 0 and 1 would work. I'm going to use 1 half. 3 times 1 half, of course, is 3 halves. 1 half minus 1 is negative half. And again, I don't really care that that's negative 3 quarters. It's great that we know that. I just care that it's a negative number. And so I'm going to denote that as such. 
and then I know that we're going to decrease between 0 and 1. One more interval to check, it looks like, between 1 and infinity. Lots of things to choose from. I'm going to go with a positive 2. Plugging in 2 for x in that highlighted expression gives you 3 times 2, which is 6. And then 2 times, or 2 minus 1, sorry, is 1. And of course, that's a positive result. And so my uh, final behavior is going to be increasing. At this point, your sign chart tells you the information that you need to know. It's just that you have yet to communicate that information. So let's do that communication right now. And we're going to say that f of x is, and choose whichever one you want to say first, decreasing or increasing makes no difference. I'll go with the decreasing. And I know that f of x is decreasing on the interval. Well, that would be between 0 and 1. Remember from the previous video, it doesn't matter if you use parentheses or brackets here as the endpoint behavior. I'm always going to use brackets. We do need to give a reason, and the reason would be because f prime of x is positive on that interval. That's all that it would take to justify. You're essentially going to write a very similar statement regarding the increasing behavior of this function. So f of x is increasing. And those intervals would be from negative infinity, which you have to use a parenthesis, up to 0. We'll close off 0. Remember, we don't want to use a union statement because that would imply that the increasing behavior is, is always kind of on that continuum. And that's probably not what's happening. So we can use the word and or a parenthesis would work. I'm going to go with and here. And I'll start at 1 and go up to infinity. And the reason is because f prime of x is greater than 0 on, and since there are two, we'll say those intervals. Now, the interesting thing about this problem, as opposed to example one, is that we could check this using a graphing calculator. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to pull that up and let's take a look at what it says. And here we go. I've gone ahead and take the liberty to sketch this for us, because I'm pretty sure you're all pretty comfortable using your graph calculator to sketch a function. But as you can see here, we see that we have indeed increasing behavior from what would be negative infinity all the way up to 0, as our foundings indicated. And then we decrease from 0 to 1. And then we're going to increase again from 1 to infinity. So it's pretty clear uh, by evidence of this particular graph that we found the correct information. Now, on this same page, if you're uh, following along with my particular notes, it uh, gives you some guidelines for finding intervals on which a function is increasing or decreasing. It's really just a three-step process there. Um, and it's all built upon figuring out when f prime is positive and when f prime is negative. Um, so um, basically, you, you, you Locate those particular critical values like we talked about and use those numbers to determine your test intervals. Um, and uh, whoa, wow, what just happened there? <laughs> and with the magic of editing, I fixed a couple of really bad errors. So let's go ahead and read through this because now it's going to make more sense. It says, let f be continuous on this open interval here, a to b. Uh, to find the intervals over which f is increasing or decreasing, what we're going to do is locate the critical numbers of f on that interval and use those numbers to determine the test intervals. Simply determine the sign of f prime by picking a test value like we talked about in each of those intervals. And then you use this theorem that we talked about for increasing and decreasing functions to determine whether the function increases or decreases. Is the function going to be positive, f prime positive, f prime negative? And the guidelines above work, you know, if you've got the interval a to b, that kind of implies that a and b are going to actually be uh, numerical endpoints. You also know that they can work if you have infinity as any kind of an endpoint as well. And the very last piece of this is just kind of reiterating some ideas that we had talked about before, but putting it into a little bit more perspective where unit 5 is concerned. A function is strictly monotonic on an interval if that function is either increasing 
on the entire interval or if it's decreasing on the entire interval. Monotonic, if you break that down, the word mono meaning one, ton tonic sort of means like behavior, one tone to the graph. So one behavior would be only increasing or only decreasing. So hopefully this helps out a little bit and we're going to uh, Per, uh, push on a little bit more with 5.3 with one more example uh, coming up in a future video. We hope that you check it out as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.